Hello, my name is Maria Doyle and in this tutorial I'm going to show how you can customize output from the Volcano Plot tool in Galaxy using R. So there's a Galaxy tutorial on using the Volcano Plot tool and that introduced Volcano Plots and showed how you can use the Volcano Plot tool in Galaxy to generate them. And in this tutorial we're going to show how you can customize the R script that you can output from that tool. Okay, so in this tutorial, we are going to import data. We're first going to create a plot using the Volcano Plot tool, selecting to output the R script. Then we're going to import the files into R, set up the script to generate the base plot, and then show customizations that you can apply to the plot using R. And if you're not familiar with R, there are some nice tutorials on how to use RStudio and R in Galaxy that you can find in the links here. Okay, so for this tutorial, we just need one file and it's in this link here in the training material. So I'm gonna copy this file. And if you're following on from the Volcano Plot Tool tutorial, you should already have this file in your history so you don't need to import it again. And here I'm using Galaxy Europe, but you can use any Galaxy that has the Volcano Plot Tool. And I'm going to first rename or give the history a name. So Volcano Plot R tutorial and then I'm going to import the file into Galaxy. Great and for this tutorial I'm using the Galaxy training material that you can find available in the menu at the top bar in Galaxy Europe and some other galaxies and if you access the training material that way if the tools are highlighted in blue, it means you can click on the tool name and get brought to that tool in the Galaxy instance. So for example, I'm gonna open up the Volcano Plot tool and add in these settings and noting that we're gonna be outputting the R script here. So if I click on that, so our, our file has uploaded. So we're, we've got Volcano Plot tool form open that is our input file. I'm going to specify that the file has a header that just makes the script a bit uh, simpler. Next, I'm going to specify the columns. So the adjusted p-value column is number eight. The raw p-value is seven. The log fold change column is four. And the gene identifier, the symbols that we're using is in column two. Okay, then I'm going to set these thresholds that were used um, in the paper, and this sets which genes get colored in the plot. And I am going to label the top 10 most significant genes by p-value. Okay, and finally, I'm going to select under output options to output the R script. Okay, and that should give us both the PDF with the plot and the R script in the history. And the other thing we need to do is to get R Studio going. <clears throat> okay, so here I'm gonna use R Studio that's available through Galaxy. And otherwise you could use R Studio Cloud or R Studio on your computer. Okay, so I'm gonna launch that R Studio. And if you're using the R Studio Cloud, or our studio on your computer, you just need to um, import the files into those our studios. Okay, so our volcano plot has been produced. So if we just click on the eye to check that it is as we expect, and it is, we've got our significant genes colored, red for upregulated, blue for downregulated, and we've got our top 10 most significant genes labeled their gene names. And the other output is our R script, and this is what we're going to be editing in R. Okay, and our R studio is now running. So how we access that is, um, we'll first actually note, we're going to be importing these files into R. So we need to know their history numbers. So for our input file, it's number one. For our script, it's number three. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the R studio. 
your active interactive tools and I'm going to click on the RStudio name and that launches the RStudio tab. Okay, and now I'm going to copy in the files from the Galaxy history. So I can use with Galaxy RStudio this GX get command to pull in history data sets by number. So I'm going to use the R file copy command. And I'm going to say copy the file that's available at GX get. So number one is our differential expression file. And I'm going to call that DE results.tsv. And we'll get some R messages, red messages, but that's fine. And we should see our file appearing here in the files pane. Then I'm going to use arrow up to get back that command to edit it. And I'm going to say I want to copy in data set number three. And that's the R script. And I'm going to call it volcano.r. And that should also appear here in the files pane. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the volcano.r to open up the script. And so we should see, it's just like the script we were looking at in the galaxy history. And now we're going to set it up to produce the first, the same plot that we produced with the tool just to check it works. So I'm going to delete these lines that are from galaxy settings start to galaxy settings end, because they're just needed to run the tool, the volcano plot to galaxy tool. We don't need them in R. Next, we need to make sure we've got the packages we need installed. That's these ones here, library. So this Galaxy has some packages pre-installed. So we can see in this yellow message here, the only one we don't have is GG Repel. And we can click on that install link there and that will run the command for us, install.packages. So otherwise, if you don't have these packages, you can use install.packages and their name like so to install them. And the final thing we need to do to set up the script to get it to produce the same plot we've seen in Galaxy history is to change this file path. So that was where Galaxy, the Volcano Plot 2 copied the file, but we need it to be now where we have our deresults.tsv file that we copied in this one here. Okay, and so once we've changed that and checked that our packages are all installed, now we are going to highlight all the code. So I'm using Command A or you can use in Mac or you can use Control A in Windows to highlight and then I'm clicking Run or you can use Command Enter or Control Enter in Windows and that runs all the code and the script and we should see then we get a PDF produced. If we click on it, we've got that same plot in that we produced in the Galaxy history. Great, so that just checks that everything's working. So now we are going to customize that script. And what I'm gonna do first is to, to not output the plots as a PDF. So I'm gonna output them in the plots pane here. And this is just to make it easier to see the different plots we're gonna be making rather than having to keep clicking to open up the PDF. Okay, so I've removed those two lines that create the PDF. And then if I highlight and run those, we should see that now instead of going to the PDF, the plot is produced here. Okay, so we can see the customizations we're gonna make. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is change the colors. So this is the row, the line that sets the colors in the plot. So instead of using blue and red, so that's fire brick, we'll, we'll use purple and orange just to show how you can change the colors. Okay, and if I highlight and run, we should now see we've got the, those colors in our plot. And if we wanna change the size of the points, we go down to where this plot is being created and this is the line that sets the scatter plot features. So we can add here a, the size. So we can set that to 0 0.5. And if I highlight and run, and now we see our points are smaller. And similarly, if we want to make the label smaller, this is where the labels are getting set. So we can add a size 
also here. And this time we'll use three and we'll highlight and run that. And we'll just make the labels a bit smaller. Okay, and what if we wanna change our categories? So instead of using down, not sig and up, if we wanna just have two categories, one for significant and one for not significant, how we can do that is like so. So we can create two new categories here. So I'll call them signif significant and not signif. Okay, so there'll be our two new um, category names and we'll remove the old ones. And next we'll set the colors for those categories. So let's say we'll have not significant will be gray and significant will be red. So we need to like so, so gray for not significant, red for significant. And then finally, we need to set the criteria for those categories. So now instead of having a category for up and down, we're just going to have one category for signif. And one way we can do it is using absolute. So we can say if the absolute fault ch change is um, greater than 0 0.58, which means it's all greater than 0 0.58 or less than minus 0 0.58. So they will be our significant genes and otherwise they are not significant. Okay, so now we can highlight that code and we can run that. And we should see now we've got just a single color in the plot, red for highlighting both our up regulated and our down regulated genes. So they're all our significant genes. Okay. And just to show that if we want to download the script, we can, we can save it first here with this save icon. And we can tick in the files plane to download the script or any other files we want. And we can then download them under more export download that will download to our computer. And if we're done with this RStudio, if we want to delete it and um, because we're finished with it, we can do that then back in Galaxy with uh, in the active interactive tools pane, clicking stop. And then we can also delete the RStudio from our uh, history. Okay, great. So we've gone through what's in this tutorial here. You can find the information on it. And so a one last thing to point out is that you can also use the volcano plot tool, the, the plot option settings to specify things such as plot title, X, Y axis, labels and limits. And if you do that, then they'll be output in the script. So you can see, that's one way to see how you can add those uh, or customize those features in the plot. So hopefully this has helped you see how you can customize volcano plot output using R and how you can use R Studio within Galaxy. If you have any questions, you can ask them in these links here. And we do have a feedback form that would be great if you let us know if you like this tutorial or if you have suggestions for improvement. So thank you very much and I hope you have a great day.